them for being prepared and diligent. Amen. And the Lord says sometimes he just want to see if you go on the way. He has a ram in the bush, but sometimes he wants to know if he'll go all the way. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give our young people a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that they're here. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that they're here to be able to hear this word today because uh, this is a word that's, that's for young and old. Um, amen. And sometimes, uh, it, sometimes it's not about so much of what young people can understand. Sometimes it's just about them being in the presence of the anointing and the words that are being spoken is able to enter not just to their hearing but into their spirit and impact their life. I've, I've in my study I've discovered that there's three kinds of anointing. Uh, there's the speak, the touch anointing. This is the anointing that allows people to come in contact in physical contact or touching or laying on hands and the anointing transfers. And then that's what's called the next level of the speak anointing, to where you can just speak and things begin to happen in someone's life because of what you're saying. And then there's the presence anointing. This is the, the utmost, the, the most powerful anointing because it says that all you have to do is come into my presence. Ooh. If you don't believe me, it's in the scripture. There was an occasion where the disciples were walking to the temple and there was a man that was sick. And they walked by and they said, his shadow healed the man. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? They don't always have to lay hands. You don't always have to speak. Sometimes it's just being in the right presence. That's the anointing that I'm after now. I've experienced the, the, the anointing, anointing, and the speak anointing. But it's that presence anointing that I'm after now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. I ain't got to know you. All I got to do is walk by you, get close to you, go to your house, and your whole house changes. Oh, it's biblical. I walk on your land and your crop is the best crop in the area. I want it. I want it. I'm going to get it. God said you, I can have it. Hallelujah. <laughs> He said, I could have it. Hallelujah. Today is the word today. Amen. Turn with me now to the gospel according to. No, no. No gospel today. Job. We're going to start with Job. We'll get to the gospel. Let's start with Job. Job is a powerful story. Job 2. Turn with me to Job 2. Anybody going through anything? I believe some folk going through some stuff. This is why this word is coming today. And it, uh, you ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with your age, young or old. See, we deal with stuff. See, don't you think some young folks ain't got issues over there? Some of them hate to go to school because of young kids they got to deal with. Just like you go to work. Folks you got to deal with, they got to deal with on another level. Oh, Lord. They don't believe me yet, Lord. Job 2. Let me find Job. Uh, Y'all already there. Well, some of us sitting around talking. Let me see find Job. Pastor. Job 2. Beginning with verse number 7. Start there. Young people, grab your Bibles and read along. I know the, I know the projector is spoiled a lot of us. But it's still good to grab your Bible. Hey, man, somebody. And follow along. Job 2, beginning with verse 7, it says, so, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore, with sore boils 
from the sole of his feet unto his crown. And he took him a, a potsherd to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still remain, retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. You may be seated in the presence of our life changing King Jesus Christ. And our key verse today is verse 9. Again, then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Today we're going to deal with counseling the curse of the critic. <laughs> this, is something that's deal this is something everybody's dealing with right here. Counseling the curse of the critic. I don't care who you are, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, there's somebody that don't like you and they criticize you. And if you ain't careful, that criticism can become a curse on your life because it'll cause you to lose your commitment. Criticism can cause you to stop being committed to God. Now we're going to look at these different kinds of criticism because there's different kinds of criticism or different levels of criticism. And we're going to look at them in the Bible. But one thing I know about criticism is that criticism is something that everybody at some point in their life has to take. Come on now, if they talked about Jesus, if they criticized him, if they scrutinized him, what makes us think that we're not going to be scrutinized, talked about? And Satan uses criticism as a tool to just get us to doubt God. And we already know that doubt keeps us out. So the enemy ain't got to kick you out. All he got to do is get you to doubt God, and you will kick your own self out. How many times have folk told folk, you can't do that, and they didn't do it? You ain't smart enough to do that. Here's one thing God is wanting us to know to, to understand today. Just because you have critics that don't agree with what God has said he's going to do in your life, don't change God's mind. You see, your critics can change your mind, but they can't change God's mind. Everybody in here have started to do something, but you got negative feedback, and you stop. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm Some of you ladies have, you have put on an outfit, and then... <laughs> somebody said, no, nah, huh? Well, it might have been your husband and be like, I don't know about that. And you didn't wear the outfit. And guess what? 
You like the Al Al food. Amen, somebody. Just because blue ain't my favorite color don't mean that you don't need to wear blue. Because I don't like blue. Oh, y'all understand what I'm saying? If God gave you to like blue and want to wear blue, then wear blue. If I don't like the blue you got on, then I need to close my eyes. Look the other way. But because you don't like it don't mean I ain't going to wear it. You got to like it. Well, God said ain't nothing wrong with me wearing blue. Satan is the accuser of the brother. That's what the scriptures declare. So. And sometimes we need to be aware that when people are talking, it's not just people talking. It's the enemy talking. Job recognized it in his wife. Jesus recognized it in Peter. Sometimes it's the folk close to you that the enemy used because he can't he can't get no closer than your family and friends to you. Oh, mess around and I'm gonna I'm gonna get it in a minute. So don't think it's strange when sometimes even the enemy says stupid stuff from the We just read it. Wasn't nobody closer to Job than his wife. And here he is needing a word of encouragement and his wife coming with foolishness. And it could have been the other way around. It could have been the other way around. He could have been. How y'all hearing what I'm saying? Just the other week, my wife was going through, and I, she, she got with me, and I'm still getting ready to do what I do, come down here, whatever. She was like, I'm like, what the hell is going on? And what is she dealing, she's going through, and then I'm like, God, what I do? <laughs> y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> Something wrong with me, what I do. I'm sorry, you know. And she like, and she like, what makes you say that? Why are you saying that? Cause just because I'm telling you I'm dealing. I said, oh, shit, I'm probably foolish. I said that to myself. And I, and I, yeah, I had to catch myself because I was talking foolish. Because what she was dealing with didn't have nothing to do with me. But once I found out what was really going on, then the Holy Ghost kicked in. And I was able to minister to my wife. See, don't you get beside yourself and think that just because you're so holy and been in church that the enemy can't creep in into you now. But she all right now. We, we all right now. Amen. Amen. Here we're going to find out that Satan, what, criticized he criticized Job. Before, before Satan got to Job, he went to heaven and started talking about and criticizing Job. The scripture declared that the sons of God went to heaven to meet with God, and, and Satan was still a son, so he got the opportunity to go. Yeah, I know he's a kicked out son. He's a bad son. But God said he's still a son. He was able to go in, into the meeting. So Satan got there, and they began to talk. Can you imagine sitting around in heaven and, and God talking about you? Can you imagine that? Man, I'm look, I'm talk, I'm looking at what's in the scriptures. I ain't talking about no fantasy world stuff. The scriptures declare that they was in heaven, having a meeting. And Job come up. Oh Lord, yes, come on, somebody. Job's name come up. And who brings up Job's name? God does. And Satan gets mad when God brings up Job name and begins to say, yeah, I, I know Job. I know who you're talking about. He ain't all that. 
I've been watching. I've seen, I've been seeing them too. But I tell you what, God, if you take that prayer hedge of protection from around him, and I'll show you what, what he really about. That's, that's criticism. He was criticizing. So he criticized. But what did God say? God said, go ahead. Because I know Job. You go ahead. And you do what you feel you need to do, Satan. And, and uh, we'll see you next week or next month, whenever they're going to have the next meeting. I'm paraphrasing. Because they went back. There was another meeting. <laughs> so Job, so the enemy, God has free will. God gave him permission to go down, and he takes away all the things Job had. Takes away all of his, his wealth, his children, everything he had. He takes it. But God, Job continues to stay committed to God. So there's another meeting where Satan gets, he's up there and they're talking. And I imagine God said, well, Job, how's your thing? How's, I mean, Satan, how's your thing going with, with Job? He said, well, I took everything and everything, but, I, but, I, but this one thing is still left. If I can just touch his health. Yeah, yes, yes. If I can touch his body, then I get him to curse him. Then God says, okay, go ahead. I know Job. Go ahead, but don't kill him. You can touch him, but you can't take his life. Go ahead. So Satan goes back. So, okay, I got you this time. Then he makes him, gives him a disease that's worse than anything anybody has ever seen. So bad that his wife, let's not, let's not be too harsh on his wife, okay? Because his wife was watching him suffer. His wife was watching him be, have to be alone, and she couldn't be with her husband like she used to be. I, I can you imagine that? So she's like, and I lost all everything we got, our family, all our children gone, all we got no more money, you sick. I mean, I mean, how much more are we supposed to take, Job? So let's not be too harsh on the wife. But this whole story is not about the wife, it's really about Job. And what Job is going through to give God glory. Now here's one thing that God wants us to know. Everything you're going through ain't about you. You hear me, preacher? Everything you're going through is not about you. Because they're still holding meetings in heaven, and Satan is still the accuser. And God is still allowing the enemy to come into our lives to do things that God will get the glory in the end of. Because if we keep reading the story, we find out that Job, what? Keeps believing God, and God restores him. Not just, just give him his stuff back. He gave him twice as much. Come on, can you use twice as much? Well, why would you think that you can get twice as much without having to go through something? The word is written for our example and even in sample to where this is the process. This is how God works. God is saying, this is me. This is how I do things. If you want a Job blessing, if you want the favor of Job, you're going to have to suffer. Oh, we don't want to hear that, though. We can't, we can't shout on no suffering stuff, man. I, I can't do nothing with that. I'm suffering enough. You talking about some more suffering? That's some folk in here today, God said, you was ready to give up and quit, but today you're you going to have a new outlook on some stuff. You was ready to just like, man, get it, man. Today you're going to get a revelation that it's God doing something in your life. And when you can't see your way out, it ain't for you to see it. It's for you to believe it and trust in the Lord. You could see your way out. You wouldn't need to come to church. 